They're exotic from far away, and they're deadly. They don't look like invading aliens, but they are. They're the wrong plants in the wrong place, invasive plants. They establish quickly and grow fast because they've left their natural competition behind, and they choke out local native species, permanently altering the landscape. Weeds are everywhere, in the country and the city, farmlands, rangelands, and even some of our most precious wild ecosystems. They cost our economy millions of dollars every year. Farmers lose productivity growing weeds instead of valuable crops. Noxious weeds overrun rangelands. Thorny, poisonous plants spoil recreational areas. Aquatic plants choke up lake ecosystems and displace habitat for fish, with devastating results for recreational fishing. Invasive plants hurt business and cost us jobs. They're a growing environmental disaster happening right before our eyes, and most people can't even see it. Local groups on the ground are working hard to detect and destroy invasive plants, and they attract a lot of support. We are getting lots of support from the community. We had, at the beginning, we were doing just public pools, but right now we have corporations working with us. We have capers, for example. Um, we have longtime residents who have seen the park go through a lot of transitions and want to make sure it stays where it's at today. Well, you have to like the outdoors a bit, and uh, this is a great way to come out for a couple of hours and contribute something to the community. So. By removing ivy in the park, we su- we'll be able to sustain the forest, and, uh, and the idea of this is to have a, a healthy, old-growth forest for generations to come. They're having some success, but their work alone is not enough. There's been an exponential increase in damage by invasive plants, made worse by inconsistent management around the province. What's needed is coordination on a larger scale, cooperation between stakeholders across the province to raise awareness and provide solutions. Business, government and the public need to work together to stop the introduction of new invasives and reduce the impact of current ones. That's why the Invasive Plant Council of BC was formed. The IPC grew out of the Invasive Plant Strategy, developed by the Fraser Basin Council with input from a wide range of interests including governments, First Nations, non-government organizations, industry, user groups and utilities. The goal of the strategy is to build cooperation and coordination to protect BC's environment from invasive plants. The IPC's goal is to facilitate that strategy. To do that, it brings together people from all over the province and across the entire spectrum of interests. The Nature Conservancy is very concerned about invasive plants because they directly interfere with the Nature Conservancy's mission of biodiversity, conservation and protection. What do we stand to lose to invasives? Well, the beautiful ecosystems that make BC, BC. Invasives hit recreation and tourism, wildlife, our economy and land values, forestry and agriculture. They affect all of us. That's why people around the province are joining the Invasive Plant Council. I owned a ranch for 30 years in the Peace River country and had problems with some new invaders and went to the Ministry of Agriculture to get help and assistance and from there it's evolved into being the chair of the local weed committee. (laughs) Well information is huge, information and education and communication and liaising, but what we really need is the dollars to deal with these problems. So how does the Invasive Plant Council help? What we're doing is helping those local and regional weed committees to get the resources they need, whether that's funding or people or government support, the legislative tools, all of those kind of things. We're supporting them because they are the eyes and the the ears and most importantly the hands on the ground. They're the people doing the work. The Ministry of Agriculture and Lands funds local government and community-based weed committees. These committees are important because they find new weeds, they educate the public, and they help to eliminate these weed problems. Local coordination is working. Our our major problem is funding, to keep that funding coming on a consistent basis. IPC workshops and forums cover a wide variety of issues around invasive plant control, like the need for consistent laws that can mandate action to control invasive plants. I think it's important in any legislation to have a clear statement of objectives. And the Provincial Weed Control Acts do not have anything like that. Communication workshops focus on the need for more public awareness. Uh, there's a lot of people who just aren't aware that, that of the problems that invasive plants are causing. And it, and it could be people just as simple as like recreational users, mountain bikers, 
uh, ATV riders, hikers, um, for instance, they have no idea that they can be pathways that bring invasive plants to new areas. So if they don't know, then they can't stop what they're doing. So part of the idea of bringing awareness is just to, to help people understand the situation and then also give them some concrete things that they can do. You know, if you're a hiker and you go into an area that's got tons of knapweed and you've got mud on your boots and you've probably picked up a ton of seeds, wash your boots off before you wear them again in some other part of the province so that you don't bring the problem to a new place. But look at in the lower mainland, the gardeners, the horticulture trade, the nursery trade, and all of those people in the business of selling plants and landscaping and gardening. It's a huge industry. And that is where actually a huge amount of our invasive plants are located. We as growers like to grow plants. And plants sometimes are invasive in one region, but they're not necessarily invasive in another region. We like to say right plant, right place, and that means appropriate planting of the plant so that it goes into its location where it has no chance of becoming invasive, spreading um, out of its contained area. Many plants are simply misplanted and do, are not given the opportunity to stay where they should stay. So if they are appropriately planted, going back to the right plant, right place, they have a good chance at being a non-invasive plant. The work on the ground, early detection and rapid response to eradicate infestations is essential. But behind that, we need to coordinate and cooperate to get the job done across the province. That's the work of the Invasive Plant Council of BC. You know, I think that the cross-section of people that we have here shows how invasive plants cut across all lines. You know, they cut across all parts of the province. They affect, you know, people at all levels, from the individual to communities to ministries that, that govern areas of the province. So I think that it just shows that it's not just a small problem that's affecting a select group of people. It's cutting across all the demographics. And I think that's why there's a real interest building in invasives and a real desire to sort of find some solutions to the problem. Wherever you live in BC, you can make a difference. Get involved with a local weed committee. Keep an eye out for invading aliens. Get out and pull some weeds. And join forces with the Invasive Plant Council of BC. Call the hotline or contact a regional coordinator by clicking on this interactive map under committees on our website.